Hi, I'm Celine LaTulip, and today I'm going to show you how to create an interactive digital prototype using Microsoft PowerPoint. I'm using a Mac, and the version of PowerPoint I have may not be exactly the same as what you have, but hopefully it's close enough that you can follow along and replicate what I do. I should also note that if you were to use something like Apple's Keynote software, most of the functionality I'm showing you is also available there. So, if I want to make an interactive digital prototype, I want a series of screens that can be linked together. But to make a whole series of screens in PowerPoint, I don't want to have to draw each screen individually. So I want to create a base screen that has the common features that will be available on all of my um, various wireframe screens. So the way I'm going to do that is using the slide master functionality. And so I go to the view menu and I choose master slide master. And this gets me to this area where I can change the underlying layout and representation for all slides. So I'm going to choose this particular slide because I want to delete everything and start fresh. And this one doesn't have very much stuff on it, so it makes it fast. So I simply delete everything so that I have a blank slide to start with. And now what I want to do is add the elements that will be on every page of my prototype. So I go back to my home ribbon and I start adding shapes. So I'm going to add a rectangle um, and stretch that across the top of my slide like this. Okay, so this is now the banner. So what I'm going to prototype is um, a media library application type thing. And so I want to actually be able to type in this. And so I will add a text box here and I will type media library and then I can format that however I want so I can make it a different color and I can make it really large and I can make it bolded that type of thing maybe that color doesn't actually work so well maybe we'll just stick with white or maybe black. Okay, um, so there's my media library and I can move it around so that my title is always going to show up in sort of the right place. Um, and now maybe I want to add a navigation view down one side, so I'm going to grab another rectangle and I'm going to set it up down here at the left hand side. I think I'll change this to be a different color, so I'm going to format the shape and I want to change it to be, uh, let's go with um, a green color. Okay, and now I can start adding text boxes here for the different menu items. So we might want a home menu item, and then I'm just going to copy and paste three more of these or four more of these and move them around. Okay, and I can use, the nice thing about using Microsoft PowerPoint is that I can use all the built-in types of features. So for format, alignment, there's a way to, here we go, to separate um, the spacing of these different elements. So the aligner distribute, and I know that's going off of the recording, but I'm going to go distribute vertically, and now they're all spaced nicely. And then I'll change what these say. So maybe this is going to be um, add media, and maybe this is going to be uh, movies and music and books. There we go. And so now I have these various um, elements that can be seen on every single uh, screen. And then I have this area here that will probably be my main content area. And that's the thing that I'm going to actually change on each individual slide. So um, and maybe I want to actually add a little picture in here. So if I, um, I can insert a picture. I'll go to my clip art folder and 
I will grab a red pen picture, and that's my icon for the media library. Maybe that's not the best icon, but it's an icon. So just to see that you can actually add pictures in here as well. All right, so now I can close my slide master by clicking this close master button. Okay, and now what you see is that now I'm, I'm on a page and it has these elements, which I don't want because they were there from when I opened this presentation. But now I can actually add a whole bunch of new slides. So I can just keep on adding more and more of these. And so this makes it easy for me to have a whole bunch of slides that all have the same base elements and change what the, the individual content on each of them. And I can, because you can see here when I do this, there are other types of master slides and I can change and choose other some other um, designs. So I could have, maybe there's three or four pages that have some similar element on here. So I could make another master and use that one. So you're not limited to just making one sort of master template, but that's what I've done here. Okay, so now I want to add some various content. So um, maybe on this, I'll make this the home page and I'll add um, a big text box that says welcome or something like that. I'll add a text box here and it will say welcome to the library, library and we'll imagine it says a whole bunch of other stuff and I'm just going to type in some nonsense words so that you get the idea. Okay, um, and maybe I'll just make that all a little bit bigger so it's more visible. Okay, so there's my main screen and now when I want to go to this screen we'll say that this is the add media screen. So again, we'll add a text box and it says, um, choose which type of media you would like to upload. And then we can add some more text boxes. Um, so we'll say books and another one. And we'll add one for each type of media. Movies and music. Okay. And we could actually put these onto shapes as well to make them look sort of more like buttons. So we can do something like that and send that to the back. Um, so you can use any of the different um, visual elements that you might have in your um, in your knowledge of how to use PowerPoint and, and make use of them here. So, and then we might want to add another button that's sort of a, a sort of a go, um, right? And you could actually, you can add those shapes and just type text right in them, which would probably be faster than what I just done. Okay, so this might be that first page. Now let's go on and change this other page. Let's imagine that this is the movies library. So now we probably want to show a sort of a library type thing. And so we're going to add this and we'll add a text box at the top that says um, my movies. And maybe we want to add something that looks more like a, a table. So we'll add a table here that's going to have uh, something like that. So now we have a table that we can move down into our library. And we'll just adjust this table so that it fits and adjust this table down. There we go. Um, we'll add some more rows. Like 
So title, rating, um, location, last watched, something like that. So you can imagine putting in movies here, um, five, etc. So you can imagine filling this out with various movies that you'd seen um, and or that you actually owned. All right, let's go to the, and then we can actually let's sort of copy all of these elements and do the same thing for the music library. Um, this time we'll put in um, etc. Okay, so I'm not going to keep on going and filling in more pages because I think we've got enough now for you to see that this is how you can prototype something relatively quickly. Now we want to actually start making links between things. So um, before we start trying to make links with this, let's see what happens if we were to play this right now. This is right now a standard slideshow. So if we play this, um, basically it moves between the pages um, when I click and it's not really interactive or prototype like. So what we want to do is go to the slideshow menu and set up our slideshow. Okay, so I can do it by going to this menu. You can also do it by going to the slideshow ribbon and clicking set up, set up show here. What you need to do here, these, this is a really critical step for making this a, a digital prototype. So you want to set it to being browsed at a kiosk so rather than presented by a speaker. So this means that it's under the user control to go through. And then we want to down here where it says advanced, sl advanced slides, we want to have that happen manually. We don't want it to automatically go through the slides because we're gonna set up links to help people get through the slides. So those are two important steps to make this work. All right, so now what we want to do is add some, what we would call sort of invisible buttons to help link between these pages. Okay, so going back to our home ribbon, we're going to grab a shape. Um, it doesn't really matter what shape, I'll just grab this shape. We're going to put this right over these types of um, areas. So this is the home. And I want this to be a button that I can assign an action to, but I want it to be invisible. So I'm going to format the shape and set the fill color to be no fill and set the line color um, to be just transparent so that it's actually not visible. Okay, so it's here, although once we click away from it, you can't see it anymore. But once we click on it, you can still get at it. You just have to play around to find it. So now I've got an invisible button and I can actually go to the action settings and set this up. So I can say action settings and then on this one we want to um, highlight the click and we want to hyperlink to and in this case we want to hyperlink to the first slide because home should be the first slide okay so we're doing this on this slide and we'll have to do the same thing for all the slides so now we can copy this and we can paste a few of these so I'm gonna grab this one and move it down to be on top of books and I will hyperlink this to going to my action settings again. I'm going to hyperlink this to, I'd say, the sixth slide. So I can actually choose a particular slide. So I'll say slide six is the books. Okay, now I want to grab one of these other ones that I made and move it down here. And I can use my cursor keys to move things around to get them in the right place. Okay, and again, I will choose action settings and I will hyperlink this to slide five. Okay, I'm gonna grab another one of these that I made and we'll put it over the add media slide. Action settings, hyperlink this to a particular slide and that would be that slide so you can click on these and it shows you a little preview that can help you find which slide you want to go to okay and I think there's one more I need to make one more copy and we'll put that over the movies 
swap movies title. Okay, and again, choose my action settings, and we're going to hyperlink this to a particular slide. Uh, that's the movies slide. Okay. I feel like I didn't hyperlink this one to the right slide. The music slide. Hyperlink that to slide four. I think that's the music one. Okay. So now I have these buttons on here and what I need to do actually is select them all, copy them, so I'm going to do control C, and now I want to go to the other pages and I want to paste. So now I have these links on all of my pages and so let's go ahead and actually run this prototype and see how the interaction works. So we can just go ahead and play show. Now this is going to be, we're not going to be able to see the whole thing because I'm only recording part of my screen so you won't see the entire thing but you'll see enough. Okay so here's our thing, here's our prototype and notice as you drag your mouse over this that you, the cursor changes to highlight that this is something that's active. So if we go to the add media, we click and it loads this page. And so of course we could add, make these active buttons as well. We haven't done that yet. If I click the movies button, it's going to go to the movies page. If I click the music button, it's going to go to the music page. From here, if I click the home button, it's going to take me back to the home page. So this is the way I can make a prototype that allows you to really experience and test the uh, interaction. Um, the key is making these sort of invisible buttons or in this case, we could actually make these visible buttons really um, obviously buttons. So if we click on that, we could say action settings and hyperlink to, and maybe this sh should be um, slide five, which I don't think has anything on it. Okay. One of the other things that you might want to do is note that you can actually add mouse over hover type actions. So I'll just show you that quickly. So on this add media, sorry, on this movies button, I will right click, I'll go to action settings again, the same place. But here now at the top, there's this other um, sort of tab, the mouse over, and I can specify actions on the mouse over. Now I don't want to hyperlink just on the mouse over, but I might want to at least highlight the item when the mouse is over. So I can do that and we can play and see what that looks like. So we play this slide now. These buttons, the cursor changes, but this button you can see you get this outline to see that there's an active area. So it gives a little bit more feedback for your prototype. Um, you could also have it play sounds. There's all sorts of things that you can set up. Okay, so that's it for using PowerPoint to create an interactive prototype. Um, there are instructions as well that I am going to post that you could download to give you some of the specifics. But hopefully that gives you a sense of how to make an interactive digital prototype using PowerPoint. And I guess the last thing to say is that the benefit of using something like PowerPoint is that you already know how to use this program. You know how to design slides. You know how to add shapes and do the ordering and the alignment. You're familiar with the interface and the tools, and that what, that's what makes it powerful. That means the learning curve is really low. There's only a few little features that you need to possibly learn about in order to get the interactive prototype angle going. And that's really about setting up the slideshow with the kiosk setting and also using the slide masters if you've never done that before. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Bye.